Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, in this video, I wanted to talk about a very interesting tweet I saw yesterday by Fabian Hiller, uh, who is basically, a, as per part of his bachelor thesis, has introduced an alternative to Zord. Now, uh, for people who don't know what Zord is, uh, let me just show, I will, just, I will show this tweet later, but basically, Zord help, uh, is a TypeScript inference, a type, TypeScript for schema validation library, if you use something like yup, you would be essentially um, familiar with uh, what are schema validation libraries, but what they do is you can write schemas like this and then just write pass and then um, you know send in a, a value and then it will send back if it is valid or not according to that and, and you can write your own custom messages error handling all those things and um, Zord has uh, basically been very revolutionary in the field of schema validation in the sense that a lot of projects have started using Zord. Even I uh, personally use it in a lot of my web dev projects to the extent where basically if you look at this tweet, I tweeted about how great Zord is uh, and you can do stuff like this. I had a, I could actually have backend validation for unique um, uh, ideas as well. And then I just uh, passed in a refine and then, uh, you know, did all this and I could just use this validation anywhere uh, and it just worked. Um, and uh, it's been amazing and Colin has been great. Uh, he uh, posts regular updates on Zord, etc. Um, but uh, it's always good to look at alternatives as well because that's how the web dev field goes forward. I'm not saying it is better than Zord but uh, it is definitely a thing to look at and it's very new so uh, i'm not saying again not saying that we should shift to it directly but it's a good thing to have a look at and you know keep following um to see how it gets better and better but to start off with um basically he has created this library um which is uh, like Zord, it is very much like Zord, it uh, provides the same DX as Zord does, but um, it is much smaller. It is less than one kilobyte, which is so amazing. Uh, you can go and read this blog post uh, about, um, you know, how, what is ValleyBot, uh, Valley how it works, uh, how it is different from Zord. It is amazing to see. Basically, he wrote this, as, uh, like, uh, like I said, uh, uh, for his bachelor thesis, but he's made it uh, with the, uh, for that with the help of Misko and Ryan. Ryan Carniato is the, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, uh, pardon me, but he is uh, one of the ma uh, main contributors in Solid.js, so he has a lot of experience with JavaScript um, libraries as well. And basically even, um, you know, Fabian has uh, created modular forms, which is uh, another very small uh, and lightweight uh, form, um, component like uh, mo well basically creating type safe forms like it's uh, said here modular forms and uh, you know he has experience with buildings or uh, TypeScript libraries like this basically how it works is again very similar to how you would see something like Zord I will just show this uh, in a second in real world it has TypeScript similarities you can just you know, uh, uh, go through all these things and see what it does. You can infer types just like Zord. You can pass unknown data and it will throw an error. Um, he himself talks about how Zord is an amazing uh, library and the positive influence it has on the ecosystem like he's written down here. But how it differs is, um, I will just shorten it now, this, all this what he's written down here in a few lines. So basically, if you've seen Zord, um, let's go to Zord.dev, I mean, uh, Zord.dev, I had it open, yeah, okay, so it uh, basically imports everything over here, and it has a lot of functions, big functions, um, which can increase your bundle size by a lot, but what uh, ValleyBot does differently, it has modular functions, which perform just a particular uh, functionality. Uh, now what that does is not only uh, imports only the things which you need but also now the bundler can see what all things you don't need and then clean those up and that is where it becomes uh, very very um, good in terms of the bundle size. 
Now, I, like I said, there's going to make a dif big difference, especially for client side applications, because your bundle size affects your client side loading um, speed by a lot. Um, so obviously you can read all this later, uh, but um, and you can see the use cases, server requests, form validation is again something which is uh, interesting. I actually didn't see this before. Uh huh. Valleybird is particularly well suited. Um, yeah. Okay. This is basically how uh, what using form data and using server actions to form validated. This is interesting and I'm pretty sure someone will get up and running with a react hook form. So, uh, uh, validation validator for this soon um it can have config files etc so you can look at this uh, you can i will link this uh, blog post uh, on builder.io in the description but i will just show a very small use case of uh, how it is working over here so basically i have this very small nextjs app i'm been running so if i go to localhost which is, what is this on 3003 for me uh, I have this very small app, uh, uh, like a very basic next year starter uh, open. And what I've done is I've just created this slash API slash post slash route dot ts. Yes. So if I go to uh, localhost 3000 slash API slash post, it will work over here. But what I want to do is have, I have this lib slash uh, validations slash post dot ts where I will write the validations just like I do in all my Zord applications. But what I can do is basically I can import all the things which I need. I need all these. I will talk about how it is being used. Uh, I need to just, uh, you know, uh, specify a schema. Uh, for some reason, uh, they're using this uppercase letter for post schema, which is a little unlike what you do with Zord or does Zord also recommend you to do that. Yeah, so this is basically having this lower case convention for some reason. Uh, he doesn't use it over here, which is interesting, but I'll just follow that for the sake of the for sake of, uh, you know, similarity with the docs. Um, so you can uh, export the schema. Uh, you can call uh, basically I want it to be an object which will have the user ID, which will be a number, the ID which will also be a number, the title, which will be a string with the min length of 10, the body of say min length of 20 and max length of 200. Uh, you can also add say uh, transformations over here. So you can call things like uh, to trimmed. So what that will do is trim everything from uh, at the start and at the end, uh, the same thing over here as well. And you know, you can go through the uh, docs and see what all things are. The, obviously, the docs aren't actually ready right now, but you can go through the source code by going through github.com uh, value what. I lost my. Yeah, okay. Um, so you can go through library. SRC and all these so over here you can go through the validations which are there um, main thing are the schemas basically array uh, map uh, enums optionals non optionals recursive set string tuple union all these things which are also available in Zord you uh, can go through the validations which are there for you know emails emojis uh, ends with something starts with something ips um, max length all these things you can go through these however you want the errors is just for error handling that's different but you can go through these mirror methods for merging you know omitting passing partial uh, these are things which are um, similar to typescript uh, uh, utility classes um, not uh, uh, and you can go through the transformations, like I said, to custom is uh, interesting because uh, you can have your own custom transformation. It works uh, similar to how uh, the dot transform function works in Zord. And you can go through all these. So basically, if you want to go through uh, a particular function for now, you will have to go through the source code or you can just uh, 
you know do something like this and then do v dot and you can see all the functions over here all right but i won't do that i will actually just use this convention over here and i can also get the type of this now by doing that export type post or say post request following the convention that i use in all my applications uh, and do something like that so basically i have the schema uh, now now how do i use it is the question so i have this route over here uh, which if i basically do something like this return next response dot json uh, let's go message hello world and then let's open localhost 3003 api post i will get this message hello world now what i want to do is i i I don't want to do a lot of, uh, I'll just show an example basically of how you will work with this. Say I have a body which is coming from the front end. If I have this say a post request and I pass a JSON, I get a body back. Say this body is just empty now or let's say for some reason, uh, this is a string. Alright, now say I want to pass the body which is coming from the front end. What I can do is have post schema dot parse uh, say the body. Now, if I I need to obviously uh, wrap this inside try catch because this will fail. And if I can uh, basically check for the error which is coming over here. So for that, I can check if error is instance of Valley error, which is from a uh, valley dot. I can say that. All right, let's send that for now. You can send back these errors which are coming from that and give it a status of 400. Uh, but say this is valid. Let me just console dot log this out for now. All right. Um, so yeah, let's see how that will work. Uh, now this is my front back end console and let me just refresh this and check out the console here or actually check this out so i have this uh, message now uh, I, ha I have a message that it says validation error and the, it gives a valid error uh, issues are all this and it, it gives me an invalid type of hello world is basically a string right and i can obviously also have a validation error over here uh, object body must be an object. I am, or did I read that wrong? One second. Mm -hmm. I saw this somewhere. I think it works with string, but maybe not with this. Okay, let's look at that later. But um, basically, I have this error coming from that invalid type as a decent enough error. Uh, and I went back to the wrong one. Say I do pass in an object now, for example. Let's just say this is now an object instead, which is coming from the front end. But I have only the user ID, which is one. All right. Now, if I go and refresh, I have basically all these errors coming in. I have a reason which is the type obviously validation number invalid type and this is, and you can also see what is that for um, and basically we have three issues or four issues these are three issues all right now say I pass in all these correctly as well title is say that and say body is something as well and now it just passes in hello world and if i see the data i have the right data coming in and if because of the transformer if i have a bunch of spaces at the start and the end like or the end it will still trim those for me as well over here just like that i can actually pass this data over here why am I doing all this work? 
and voila. Uh, to be fair, you can also do this, and this will work. Uh, so basically, all this is very interesting. Uh, it it works as the same way as Zord. Basically, it provides the same developer experience, um, but it is an amazing uh, library for it. And also, also you can have custom uh, error validation just like this. Save min length. Uh, okay, I have this post a minimum twenty and two hundred. So if this is the the second argument is basically the error which I want to pass. So if this was say less than twenty. I remove everything from here to here. This will give me an error. It basically says post body has to be minimum of 20 characters, which was the error which I passed in here. Now, this is just a basic introduction of how a value bot works, but there's a lot more things which you can do with it. You can also have, uh, you know, transformations on this. Uh, say you can dot trans. I'm still to check out how this works, but transform async yeah transform exists on this so you can just for uh, have the value and say um let's say title value like i said i'm yet to check out how this works completely but you know what let's try this out over here if i go to transformations oh i might actually have to call two person instead value title value let's see if that works uh, and i obviously need to oh that worked okay uh, obviously i need to move this from the title body to the title but uh, you know you can have these custom transformations as well uh, and you can have asynchronous transformations and then call parse async um, post schema dot parse is okay you can i think you don't even need to do that over here and you also have these parse or oh, you can call the parse async function like this and then pass it over there you can have um You can do all these things just like Zord works, and it is really amazing how um, amazing to see people uh, getting influenced by Zord and the um, uh, brilliant, uh, you know, environment and the um, developer experience that it gets. And to have it in a library with such small bundle size is a big plus point. Uh, but like I said before, it is still very experimental in, uh, in and I probably wouldn't use it in my production app uh, already, but I will still keep following it and see how this uh, turns out. And maybe one day in the future, this might be the next Zord, just like Zord replaced Yup and Joy. Uh, so that is it for this video. Um, sorry if it, the video felt a little unprepared because it was I uh, just had this impromptu decision to make this video right now but um, if you liked it please like share and subscribe to my channel it does help me a lot I recently hit 500 subscribers which is very exciting and I feel like it is a step in the right direction for me and if you feel like you can uh, if you feel like the source of help please uh, you know share the channel with someone else wh whom it might help as well so that is it for this video uh, uh, for more such content like i said uh, click on the notification bell icon as well and keep watching goodbye